We've got a struggling non-denominational believer. It says that you fear the end of times keep you believing. How do you want to talk about that, Sky? How are you? Hello, Sky. How are you guys doing? Doing pretty good. Groovy. Cool. Tell us what so, you believe. Um, yeah, I I um started really wrestling with my beliefs in uh, May, and I'm in the middle of deconverting, and I'm I think anyway. Um, and I kind of <laughs> wrapped up my uh, uh, beliefs that I'm still holding on to into a couple things. And one of them is um, the fear of, like, the rapture and tribulation, like the biblical apocalypse of Revelation. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, um, specifically. Were, were, were you a particular student, denomination, a religious denomination? I'm a little curious. Um. Non-denominational, but we all know that's kind of just Baptist without mm. putting Baptist on it. <laughs> mm. At least the church I was grown, I grew up in. Okay. You did say non-denominational. Non I, my bad. Sorry. That's okay. Okay. So, so what has you uh, hooked on this? Like, what, what, it, what has you convinced that that's going to happen? If are you, you can put your finger are, on it, are you convinced it's going to happen? Like a. Can, can we quantify it on a scale? Like, how sure are you that it's really going to happen? Zero to 100? I I actually would say it's about 50% right now. It's not really, like, a huge thing for me, but it's definitely one of the things why I'm still believing. It's kind of like how the fear of hell for other people is. I really don't fear hell. I don't really fear death. But I do fear being left behind, if, mm -hmm. that, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. When I hear a 50%, so, um, I, I want to make sure that we're not talking about whether you think it's true or false, that you, that you're like at a, you know, you're, you're halfway up to a 100 on a scale that it actually would happen. Yeah. Yeah. That it would actually happen. I think mm -hmm. it's about 50, 50 right now. Do you have reasons to back up that level of confidence? I, I mean, I really don't. It's, it's um it's just what i grew up was uh taught growing up yeah. and it's one of those things that i just it's so in me that now i can't it's just i cannot put it aside without addressing it you know what i mean i totally know what you mean this this is a common thing that that comes up quite a bit with the agents at recovering from religion this uh these legacy beliefs these legacy fears that came with the belief. And I don't know if I have a really good answer to how to overcome that other than maybe asking you how you think you could overcome it or other people might overcome it and then explore those reasons with you. And we can get into that here if you'd like, or we can kind of talk like meta high yeah. level about it, whatever you want to do. I mean, yeah, I have a specific, like another, I guess a specific question, like, you know how, like you made the, analogy of like the wheel and the spoke like this is a spoke that can, comes off of that belief um is that it, so like the prophecies in revelation so it's a big if if they were to come true but if for some reason they started to come true methodically and one by one just as they are prophesied more or less in the bible would that be good enough reason to believe that the Bible is true or that God exists. Mm -hmm. And what's your answer to that? Because you're the one that has the belief. You're the one that has to make that determination. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Yeah. Have you ever, have you encountered people who uh, used to believe it, but don't anymore? That they're, that they uh, would be raptured. In, uh, the fear of rapture. No. Do you in know, fact, do you, um, I have not encountered anybody who is not, Actually, like in some way a theist or a spiritual at some point like i, I lived oh in, like a, you um, need to meet some more people very tight <laughs> so circle. there yes, there I are know. a lot of people there are that's okay <laughs> and sometimes people are in communities where they just don't have access to folks like that but mm -hmm. the atheists are everywhere whether you were born atheist or you overcame your god belief and there are even shocker atheists who have overcome their fears of being raptured or their fear of hell uh, it's not an easy thing. And sometimes people struggle with it for all of their life. You know, it's one of these mm -hmm. possibly psychological things that just stick with you. 
but um, there are people also who have overcome it. So sometimes what uh, what I found in experience in observing interactions with people, believers and non-believers, is that when you meet somebody who shares their story about how they overcame their fear, that it could be really instrumental in getting you on that same journey. But it's not a cure all. You may find you, you may find that it, it exacerbates your fear. So you're just going to have to, in my view, just find other people who um, who are at various stages in their in their process of overcoming that, and then see uh, observe and see how that is uh, affecting your own fears. But don't feel bad about it. Like okay, this yeah, is something sure. that people struggle with. Like this, these religious views, they're a mind fuck. <laughs> they, they, they will they will mess you up uh, they can't they have the potential to mess you up and they mess up a lot of people that really struggle with it for all our lives but um there are solutions out there and sometimes it's you have to elevate it and maybe talk to a therapist but uh yeah. there are there are trained people there are resources resources at recovering from religion that could probably talk with you about that um we're talking about it now i hope this might be somewhat therapeutic um but i'm yammering again so Let's go to you. Well, I'm curious, you know, with the way that you've just you've started this call and the way that you said that you're in the process of deconverting, I I wonder, you know, you, you have this this fear of the rapture and you're curious about prophecies. I'm curious, do you actually are you convinced that there is a God right now? Um I have bad reasons for believing in a God. Like <laughs> I have personal experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what makes me believe in a God. And I know that's not good evidence and that's not a good reason. And, you know, I'm kind of, I'm working through that, mm -hmm. you know, um, is there I'm, a relationship I'm between your, searching, your fear of, is there a relationship between your fear of the rapture and your belief that there's a God? Like if you started, I'm wondering if you started lowering your confidence that God was real over the coming months and years, if there would be a corresponding impact in your fear of being raptured. Or do you think that that's something that you continue um, being fearful of, even if you were pretty convinced that there was no God? Um, I think it goes uh, both ways. Like, um, I had this fear when I was like a strong theist, and I am not that anymore, obviously. Um, but like, I have seen that fear go down, and I've also seen it amplified over like, I guess the last couple of months where I'm really I'm starting to see like, okay, I really don't have good reasons for my belief. And then I, then my brain goes, okay, but what if it's still true? Mm -hmm. Then this would happen. And yeah. so I feel like they're connected, but sure. like if my fear in the rapture were to go down, not necessarily my God belief would go down as well. But if they, if the God belief went up, then I want to go down, you know, they're not um, like that. They're not necessarily tethered together. Yeah. Well, that, that kind of mm -hmm. makes sense. Cause there are a lot of atheists who still struggle with, with those fears. So, uh, I mean, in all honesty, this might be something that you'll just have to deal with for the rest of your life, but um, hopefully that's not the case. Nobody wants to be yeah. getting, getting stressed out or worried Absolutely. about something that, yeah, uh, probably the best thing that you can do is is to just keep asking yourself, do I have a good reason for being worried about this? I find myself doing this whenever I'm, not whenever, but when I'm grilling food, the vegans are going to get on me now. Okay, <laughs> um, when I'm growing, grilling any type of food, you can grill veg vegetables, I suppose. When my hand gets a little too close to that flame, the thought crosses my mind, what if this is real? Like, what if there really is hell or what if there is a, a rapture or something like those fears come up and I don't think that there are any gods. Yeah. I haven't for a very long time. I find myself reminding myself that I don't have any good reason for thinking that it's true. And that helps me. That helps me reset myself. And maybe yeah. that's something that you can try too. like, just try to have that inner conversation with you, with yourself and be like, the time to be worried about it is when there's a good reason to think that it's the case. And, you know, it also, yeah. you said that you just started questioning like six months ago. And so it's, I know it might feel like it's been a long time, but it really hasn't. Uh, th this kind of oh, thing yeah. <laughs> gets, like you said, programmed into us by repetition and time. And so it's going to take the opposite of that. It's going to take time and exposure to deconversions before you can truly loosen that. 
Um, so a lot, exactly what Anthony said, but I would also, so he recommended recovering from religion, uh, which you can call them anytime. And there's several places, um, like there's a, there's a website and there's a phone number. Okay. Um, then there's the secular therapy project. If you can afford to get a therapist, um, we, there's all kinds of deconversion stories out on YouTube. Uh, the Neil, the six of four atheist is a good one. Um, there's a whole bunch of deconversion stories you can go and listen to and listen to how other people got through this. Um, and then we also have our fan groups, the, uh, the ones on Facebook that we mentioned at the beginning of the show, we have a public and a private one. Um, so this is the public yeah. and then there's private so that you don't have to be out as an atheist. Um, and we have our discord server, which we're also going to be joining, um, at the end of the show for a few minutes. So there's so many ways to expose yourself and just keep talking, keep asking questions, keep doing what you're doing. I'm so, I'm so happy for you that you're doing this. And if you find a oh, way to overcome you. it, give us a call back and share it with us because yes. there are probably other people listening right now that want to know how you end up resolving it if you are able to. So if, if you if you have some great ideas, uh, try to share them. All right. Do you have anything else, Guy? I, I no. Thank you okay. guys for your time. Thanks Thank for the you call. so much. Hope to talk to you again soon.